So hello everyone. Uh, I am Laureline Grandjean and I am very happy to welcome you to this uh, 11 coffee lecture. Today we will uh, have the great pleasure to listen to Lorenza Sabatori, a librarian at the EPFL library, and also to Mohamed Barayi, doctoral assistant in the lab laboratory of photonics and quantum measurement, working with Professor Tobias Kippenberg. He is the founder of NanofabNet, that is an EPFL open science project. As usual, this coffee lecture will be recorded and I stop recording at the end of the presentation, so just before the discussion. So feel free to ask any of your questions to our two specialists. Um, at the end of this coffee lecture, I will share a link for a short survey. So uh, if you could fill it out, it would be very great because it helps us a lot to improve. And uh, now uh, I let the mic to my colleague, uh, Lorenza. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for being here with us today. Uh, thank you, Lorenza, for the introduction. And thank you, uh, Mohamed, for sharing this lecture with me. Um, as you can see, we will talk about open science today. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the history of open science, nor about the services that EPFL offer you to uh, practice open science in your research activity. However, you will find some information at the end of this presentation and some contact. So feel free to contact us <clears throat> if you have any question with that. I will uh, just try to briefly uh, describe general advantages of open science. And then I will try to go a bit more in detail of practical benefits, providing some example. And then Mohamed in the second part of the lecture will uh, give you a nice and uh, um, <clears throat> a wider example of uh, what you can do uh, for practicing open science. Uh, I would assume that we'll know what is open science. Someone just says that open science is better science, but if we want to stick to a more classical definition, um, I've chosen this one from Foster that says that open science is simply the practice of uh, science and research in a way that others can collaborate and contribute. So collaboration and co-construction is uh, one of the main elements where all the research outputs, no matter what we are talking about, so research data, lab notes, uh, publication, methodology, and so on and so forth are freely available and are made freely available in a way that um, that enable the reuse, the redistribution, and the reproduction of the research. Uh, if we stay on a general level of advantages, uh, we can say that open science brings uh, enhanced integrity and quality of research, and uh, also lets that uh, the reproducibility of results are uh, much higher. And if we want to go beyond the academic and scientific context, uh, we also can say that open science has an higher impact for society at large and uh, make citizens more aware and more engaged in in science that sometimes is really i mean uh, in the in the in the bubble and it's not really um, shared with others uh, if we want to go more in detail of the practical benefits i've tried to describe three main categories of course this is not an exhaustive list of benefits um, <clears throat> we don't have the time to go uh, to go so far uh, uh, the first, uh, the, the categories are linked to metrics, to compliance, to policies, and to uh, uh, visibility, accessibility, and collaboration at large. Uh, for the metrics, uh, we can talk uh, uh, about classical metrics and new metrics. For the classical metrics, in the last, uh, let's say, 15 years, uh, uh, many studies prove that uh, opening uh, research uh, publication uh, and also sharing data uh, bring a citation advantage uh, compared to the uh, articles mainly that are not openly available. Uh, the new metrics, uh, or the like the European Commission called them the new generation metrics, there is a very interesting report on that uh, of 2017, uh, says that um, uh, citation can come not only from uh, uh, the classical uh, citation in other publications, but also from media, social media, mainly Twitter and blogs and so on and so forth. So there is the old metrics, but uh, um, providing an open access to uh, research outputs and research results. So, I mean, really um, practicing open science uh, with a, a constant sharing of, uh, of these results uh, can uh, bring uh, something more in the research assessment. These sharing practices are included more and more in the research assessment. The second point will come again in a second, because if we talk about compliance, um, if researchers uh, practice open science on a daily basis, 
it will be much more easier to be compliant with policies. Uh, institutional policy, for example, you know that at PFL we have an open access policy, but also with the requirements on open access to publication and open research data, like the one that the SNSF and the European Commission have. Um, but if we talk about research assessment, uh, funders can go even further. And for example, the European Commission with a new framework program, Horizon Europe, uh, will not only extend mandates on open access and open research data, but it, it will also include the evaluation of open science practices at the proposal stage. So um, open science practice won't be only a very nice thing that you can do, but it, is, it will also be something that can be really assessed and evaluated to get funded in the, in the, in the next program. And we can expect that this is the first uh, example but many others uh, can follow in the next uh, in the next um, years and um, it, it is also linked to the new generation metrics so it's really important to include this kind of practice in your uh, daily work as a researcher um, the third category of uh, benefits that I would like to uh, briefly show you. It's linked to visibility, accessibility, and collaboration that can come from these, uh, from these, two, from these elements. Uh, if you decide to uh, practice open science and publish your research results openly, uh, you will have, of course, a broader audience because you can go beyond paywalls of publisher, for example. You can have a faster dissemination of your results. If we think about the preprint servers like Akai, for example, it, it's really pioneer and one of the most well-known examples of that. Uh, uh, we, we, it, it's quite clear that uh, dissemination of results is much faster. Um, this way of uh, open up results and uh, uh, create community around this um, this uh, publication and sharing of results can bring you an open discussion as well as a community feedback. There are examples like, for example, Azabayo, that's a community that work on uh, open scholarship at large, uh, and uh, it's quite focused on the dissemination of uh, uh, research results via preprint. And um, you, practicing open science means also that you uh, communicate uh, on, a, on various outputs. And this is a quite uh, open and innovative way of uh, sharing uh, um, science and uh, results because we don't, we don't share only classical publication, but also protocols, methodology, even negative results. And this is very important. And uh, with this last uh, uh, category, I will uh, let the floor to Mohamed because he will going to show you this uh, Nanofab project. And I think that this project that has been funded in the context of DPFL Open Science Fund um, really uh, summarize in a very nice way many of the, the elements I've described so far. So I will start the, uh, my screen uh, and I'll let the floor to Mohamed. Thank you very much, Lorenza, and thanks a lot for the opportunity to, to present today. Um, so I'm Mohamed Brahi. I'm a PhD student in, uh, at EPFL in the group of Professor Tobias Kippenberg. And today I would like to talk about this uh, question, how do we document and share the tacit knowledge in micro and nanofabrication? What is a micro nanofabrication? It's an interdisciplinary field which ranges from engineering to basic science, and it involves a lot of trial and error, which kind of, uh, I guess now it makes sense for you why I ta I'm talking about tacit knowledge, because nanofabrication is very similar to an advanced way of cooking in, in, sci uh, in science, which involves a lot of recipes Usually when you talk to people, they start a project, they have a first generation sample and then something happens and then they get to the very last result. But what really happens here is the key, the recipe is the key. If you look into the notebooks of people working in nanofabrication, you mostly look at these ugly pictures, the first two on the left, but not much of these pictures on the right, which actually is what's behind all the, all the good results that we get. And we try to solve these problems to get to a result, which is what we need at the very end. However, in the publications, we usually talk about how we got to start, how, we, how nice of an idea we have, and how great our last generation of samples are. And we don't really talk about all the failures that we had across the way, along the way. So this is 
at the moment, the way it's done, for example, in our laboratory, we have electronic lab books, which they have the advantages of not having a style guide. You can search through it when you're writing your thesis and you want to compile uh, a lot of things that you have done, which not necessarily led to publications, but they might be a key for the next uh, generation of students. And the major drawback of these is that they have very limited access if you want to share them with someone. It's not very easy. And if you spend time to make these notebooks very well, the problem is that you cannot really cite them later on and you cannot use them in your own publication. You have to write them again, necessarily. Then this brought us to the idea of what if for these kind of reports, we could assign them a DOI so we could reference them later and uh, we could keep them also for ourselves. Much better if you want to share them with someone, we can search through them very well and efficiently. And last but not least, if it's on, on, a, on, on a free access, uh, open access cloud, which we can share it with everyone. And in order to add another aspect to this, we also thought about adding a commenting section where we could interact with other researchers. And it's, uh, it can, you can think about it as uh, other people starting to give you comments about what you can do and you can make better. Uh, which brought us to the whole idea of NanofabNet, which is an open access uh, platform uh, here hosted at EPFL. And uh, we work with Zenodo in order to, um, to generate a uh, digital object identifier for, for our re uh, reports. And just to give you um, a brief introduction of the platform, I would switch uh, to my browser here just to show you how the platform looks like. Nano Fabnet, uh, if you type in your browser, it's uh, very similar to an archive uh, of, of, uh, of different articles. You can uh, skim through them. And for each article, we have the title, uh, author, a short abstract, we have tags that we can search through. We keep different versions of each, uh, of each article, when it's published and from where it's, uh, it's coming, the article. And uh, we, you can search via the tags or via uh, searching for, for a specific author. And if you're logged into the platform, just to show you how easy it is to uh, go from your notebook into a publishable format that we can share with, with everyone. If you go to the dashboard, here you have an option of creating a new article, which I have for the sake of time, I have created already one, one article yesterday. As you can see, the title is draft. And for the other ones that I have published so far, the title is published, which we make it easy for, for students and researchers to keep a draft of different articles that they want to publish maybe later. And they can work on it before uh, publishing it online. And for, for the article, um, actually I'm going to just publish it now on Zenodo just to show you how easy it is and how uh, practical it can be. Uh, for a draft article, you can, uh, I'm not going through the details, but you can generate tags or choose from existing tag. You can add links to, for example, here I have added the link to the one specific equipment that was used uh, for this report. And uh, the only thing that I have placed here is a PDF from, from my notebook, which uh, if I press publish, now it's published on the platform on NanoFabnet, it is accessible. A DOI is reserved, which is going to be pushed on the Zenodo repository in, in a few minutes. And for the articles that are already published, uh, you can use the DOI here. Um, apart from, for example, you can see the commenting uh, for, for the article that people ask questions and uh, they can get answers. Uh, if you look at the DOI, you can see that it's uh, it exists on Zenodo and can be used later on, citing in publications or thesis, so that they don't get lost. And uh, there's a full versioning control, uh, which uh, is, a, is a powerful tool that Zenodo uh, allows us to do. So uh, I think I'm maybe a bit over time. So thank you very much for listening. And please let me know if there is a question. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mohamed. And thank you very much, Lorenza, for this uh, very, very uh, interesting and uh, useful, I guess, uh, presentation about open science. Um, I